Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a summer reading recommendations and summer TBR video. So I've got five books that I would recommend you read this summer and then four books that I want to head to that I haven't read before and one that I would really really like to reread and actually was the one that inspired this video but we'll come to that one in a little bit in the middle just as a teaser frankly a bookish i was gonna say banana that i'm dangling in front of you i think the correct term is carrot first up are two books that couldn't be more different but to me bring up like the two biggest kind of summer holiday memory vibes for me so the first one is a quake a meze you made a fool of death with your beauty which is a romance novel which looks at a woman who has been bereaved and she is, has been going through a long period of grief and then on one hot steamy summer day in the city she catches the eyes of someone across the balcony at least to a very amorous moment a really spontaneous amorous moment that kind of unlocks something within her and then we follow her from there this book is also brimming with joy quite literally because there is a character in here called joy who every time she appears is joyous and actually it's always joy's name that i remember out of this book over the blinking um, narrator Faye. i do apologize a quakey because this book i actually read when i was in cape verde last year so on literally a tropical island reading this book about romance that also looks at bisexuality brilliantly and it looks at art and culture but really it's about is the person what we love or is it the spirit of someone that we truly love and how love can happen at different times in our life and there are potentially many more than just one person that we can truly love within our lifetime. The fact that it's also really steamy, the fact that it's then set in some really sunny places makes me really think of summer when I think of this book. And I think if you're not going away for the summer or you can't go away for whatever reason, this is like a book that takes you on a holiday with all of these people and I just think it's ace. Now the next one also takes you on a holiday with lots of people but is very reminiscent of a lot of my sort of <laughs> childhood memories of summer holidays i'm not quite sure why but kind of the rain falling down windows is something that i really really remember when i was a kid probably because we stayed in the lake district quite a lot and we'd have some really sunny days but we'd also have quite a lot of very rainy summer days and this is sarah moss's summer water which takes place on the longest day of the summer however it's a really wet miserable rainy british summer day and we follow various different people who are all staying on the same holiday park and as the day goes on there is a brooding sense of unease but what also is happening that I think Sarah does amazingly in this book is we sort of skip into the minds of lots of different people staying at this holiday park and kind of get to know what they're going through possibly what may, might be about to happen to some of them and it's just brilliant it's really short and sharp and I read this actually on a really rainy day at Riagoch in North Wales, where I love staying and haven't booked to go this summer and really, really need to. Anyway, this is a very, very different kind of summer, but it is a summer experience that, well, not the experiences of what they, these guys go through. I seem to remember this one character who, while she's having sex, keeps thinking about either bacon or toast. And I remember messaging one of my friends and being like, this made me think of us. Not like we'd had sex together, but like just the fact that always thinking about food at awkward times. Anyway, definitely like those rainy summer days where you feel a bit hemmed in. This has all of that feels about it. So yeah, would recommend. Now, the next three are all set on the same summer. And I know I've talked about this on the channel before, but I thought it'd be nice to talk about these books again because I've realised like sometimes I might mention like a book once or twice a year. And oddly, sometimes that feels like quite a lot. But other times I feel like there are so many books I'd like to shout about more often. There is a fear that maybe you'll all get bored if I'm talking about the same books too often. Not like every week I wouldn't mention these books, but like maybe a few times a year or every summer suddenly remind you of these books again. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on all of that down below. And can you mention a book too many times? Or is it actually quite nice to hear about books now and again? over different time periods. Anyway, these are all set in the summer of 1976, which was before I was born, but is one that has seemed to have etched 
itself into anyone who was in the UK and alive at that time's brain because it was this just ridiculous heat wave. I mean, there was even at one point a plague of ladybirds, which inspired another book that I haven't mentioned here because I could have chosen about five or six books that are set in the summer of 1976. I picked three. First up, we have My Go Farrell, and this is Instructions for a Heat Wave. And this is about a family who one day the father, Robert, just literally walks out the front door and disappears and it's what happens to Greta, his wife, who's left behind to kind of pick up the pieces, try and work out what's going on and I just think it is fantastic. I mean it's Maggie O'Farrell so of course it's going to be fantastic, she's one of my absolute favourite authors but yeah this is one that I would consider at some point I would like to reread and um, I have a feeling that I'd quite like one day, maybe in like, do you ever get this where you've got like projects for like in a decade's time, I'd like to read her books in order of publication, like when I'm in my 50s or something, that's plan. I'm in my 60s, we'll see if I'm lucky enough to get there. Anyway, the next one is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, who is an author that I absolutely adore, and if you've been around for any length of time, you'll know that. This is all set in the summer of 1976, when on um, this cul-de-sac, Mrs. Creasby goes missing people think. Well, when I say people, the people that think she goes missing are Grace and Tilly, who are, I want to say they're about 10, but they might be a little bit older. And they decide to investigate and find out what's happened to her and who the perpetrator of this disappearance might be. And what's done so brilliantly is as Grace and Tilly go through all these different, like, well, they get to sneak into all the different houses on this cul-de-sac. And in doing so, they overhear lots of conversations that they don't understand, but we as adult readers do understand. And so we get these snippets and insights into what's sort of may possibly be going on, but another layer to what Grace and Tilly do. And also it's just brilliant about how kids can totally misunderstand or misconstrue what adults say. So then they go and they get into certain sort of scrapes as they're trying to work everything out at the same time. And I just thought it was really, really deftly done, brilliantly done. And the way Joanna can and writes character and dialogue and just makes the ordinary extraordinary, I just think is absolutely fantastic. And if you haven't read this one yet, you really, really, really should. This is the American edition. I've only got the UK proof, but I just, yeah, I think it's brill. And I've loved every single Joanna Cannon book I've read which is all of them. So there we go. Although actually no, I haven't read an anthology that she's edited, but I would like to get to that over the summer, but that's not in one of my summer TBR picks, but there's one that I've got on the periphery. Then we have one of my all time favorite books. This is The Proof of Love by Catherine Hall. This is set in the Lake District during that heady, heavy, heated summer. And we meet Spencer who has gone to the Lake District kind of not wanting to explain to people why and something seems to have happened to him back at Cambridge where he was um, a mathematician and we follow him as he ingratiates himself where he can within a small town because this is very much about insiders versus outsiders and it's fascinating how some of the characters react to him, particularly a young girl called Alice who becomes really good friends with him. However, people start to become a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of a friendship between a grown man and a 10 year old. And it looks at that in a really interesting way. And also as it goes on, secrets are revealed that are going on in the town, but also why on earth Spencer has ended up there. So um, yeah, it's a really, really, fab book, one of my absolute favourites. And I remember when this came out on some of the editions, it had a sticker that was like, um, Sarah Waters meets Daphne du Maurier. And I was like, oh really, come on. And Catherine did. And also what's lovely about this book is I have become friends with Catherine since. I actually gave this as, well, on Sky Arts from Hay, every guest I have on, I give them a book that I feel they'd love because of what I've learned about them. And this is the one slight spoiler because it's not for another week or so that I gave to Kate Moss when she came on the show so um, yeah but I just think it's really 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 good and actually this makes me want to reread it although I know what's coming and all the unraveling is part of what's so brilliant about it sorry I thought I had like a summer fly on my ear next up is the book that inspired this video because I was thinking of summary books and 
wanting to possibly do a video where I read a lot of books with summer in the title. This author, I keep hearing about their latest two novels and I have read this debut, but I couldn't really remember it apart from that I know I liked it and that it was quite different from anything else I'd read and I really want to read their other books. So I thought maybe I should go back, reread it in the summer and then head to her next two books. Who is it? What are you making us wait for, Simon? Well, it's The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel. And this is set in the town of Breed, where a young boy turns up out of nowhere and claims to be the devil. Some people are worried by this and think that possibly it could be true. Lots of people don't believe it. And then lots of strange things start to happen and we follow on from there. How corking is that cover? It's ridiculous. I really want to read Betty by Tiffany McDaniel and also, I want to say it's called The Savage Side, but I'm not sure that's quite right. It's not savage spelt the correct way, like my way. It's spelt the other way, the wrong way. I really, really, really want to uh, reread this this summer and we'll see. I have put a vote of some books for um, my patrons to pick and by the time this goes live, I'll know what it is. But as I'm filming this, I've only just done it, so I've got no idea. One of the other books is The Summer Without Men by Siri Husvet, who is an author I can't believe I've not read. And this is one that I heard about thanks to the lovely Benjamin over at Benjamin's Journal. Or is he Benjamin Green now? Anyway, the lovely Benjamin. And he absolutely raved about this when he read it. It's about a woman who I think her husband has left her. She's going through a really difficult time. So I think she heads back to her family's. I'm not sure. Yeah, she goes back to the summer. Blah, 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 blah. Mia Fredrickson cracks up first, then decamps for the summer to the prairie town of her childhood where she rages, fumes and bemoans her sorry fate as an abandoned spouse. Um, and yeah, I think it's how she kind of, what's the word? I want to say links up, but that isn't quite right. How she gets back in touch with people from that town, particularly the women and how they kind of all inspire and everybody moves on. That made it sound like a really bad cliched summer movie and I don't think it is that at all so I apologise Siri but yeah Benjamin raved about it I've been wanting to read it ever since so I'll definitely be reading it over the summer. Next up another book that's titled is Just Summer. No not the Ali Smith one and I did nearly include that. I liked Ali Smith Summer. It wasn't my favourite of that seasonal quartet. I think it felt a bit rushed and I know that she managed to write about the pandemic sort of as it was happening, but still, I think there could have been a little bit of space. I still love Ali Smith, but that's why I've not included that one. Anyway, it's one that I may well be reading with the lovely Katie James as a buddy read. It's Edith Wharton's Summer, and Edith Wharton is one of my favourite authors. The House of Mirth is one of my favourite books of all time. I read, I wanted to say Agnes Grey, but that's a Bronte book, Ethan Frome. I read that last year and really, really loved it. Summer is one that I've had on my shelves to read over the summer period for about the last three or four years and haven't got around to yet, but I'd really, really like to. I have no idea what it's about. I don't really want to know too much. It's one that I'm hoping to get to and hopefully we'll be reading it with the lovely Katie's channel she really check out along with Benjamin's. I'll link them both down below. Then we have a short, hot, but I think quite, well, it was a sensation and it's quite tricky in what it looks at. This is Heatwave by Victor Jestin, translated by Sam Taylor. And I would like to read a lot more books in translation going through the rest of the year because I haven't read as many as I would like this year. It says here, it's the end of August and the long summer holidays are drawing to a close. 17 year old Leonard is on a camping holiday with his family in the south of France. Awkward and ill at ease, he's an outsider who creeps away from parties unnoticed after a couple of drinks. On the final Friday of the trip, unable to sleep, Leonard goes for a walk and sees one of the boys from the campsite, Oscar, hanging from the rope of a playground swing. Leonard watches as the rope slowly strangles Oscar, then, unable to think straight, he buries the body in the sand and returns to his tent. The next day is the hottest in 17 years, disorientated by the oppressive heat and distracted by his desire for a girl named Luce, Leonard spends the un ensuing hours of trying not to unravel. This just sounds so intense, but in a kind of summer gothic way. I would like to find more summer gothic novels because I'd like to be able to read gothic all year round. Like I'd love some spring gothic novels too. Autumn and winter, I feel they're covered, but spring and summer, where are all the gothic books? But anyway, there we go. So we have that one. And then last but not least is a proof of a book that is coming out, uh, well, as this goes live tomorrow. And it is in such tremendous heat 
by Kahindi Fadeep. And it says that this is, well, basking in Singapore's non-stop sunshine, low tax rate and crocodile birkins on every other arm. Dara, Amaka and Lillian are having, sorry, are living the dream until their carefully constructed lives are upended by a handsome and mysterious new arrival. Discover the hottest book of your summer. Now saying this is going to be the hottest book of the summer and having a cover like that, I believe it and I want to experience it. So that is another one that I'm going to be heading to. So I'll be traveling, so I'll be traveling to Singapore whilst actually just being on my sofa. And that sounds lovely. So those are 10 books, five of which, well no, six of which I've read, one of which I'm going to reread and four I haven't read yet, that um, you might want to add to your summer TBR. Let me know of all the books that are brimming with summer for you. And if you know any summer gothic kind of books or just sort of like is summerly sinister kind of thing, could it be a thing, summerly sinister? maybe it could, then I would love to know about those. I will see you in another video very, very soon. Thanks as always for joining me. And if you want more bookish content, you can find my Instagram, my TikTok, my Patreon, my other channel, Savage Snapshots, and much more linked down below. And uh, yeah, I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.